Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome to Dungeons of Dreadmoor, a very old and hence very cheap roguelite game, perfect for our little weird recommendation Fridays. This is, I'd go so far as to say, one of the titles that really began bringing back the idea of roguelite video games. These days, of course, there's quite a few of them, and the formula has evolved a great deal from its humble origins. Nevertheless, Dungeons of Dreadmoor is, even today, a pretty fun and charming in his own retarded little way. As you can see here from the background, it is, um... <laughs> A rather quirky little video game, which you're going to see a lot more of once we get into it. So, without further ado, let us simply just dive on in on uh, the regular difficulty. Here is the skill selections. You need to select a group of these, and each of them will give you access to a skill tree. This determines your specializations and your abilities as you delve deeper into the dungeons of Dreadmoor. You can get something basic and boring, like uh, figuring out how to use swords, or knives, axes, maces, pole arms, staffs, uh, archery, or throwing weapons, even unarmed and ambidextrous. Or, you can get something significantly more quirky, like, for example, Killer Vegan, utilizing the power of clean living and moral superiority to slay your enemies. I actually kind of like Killer Vegan. It's really, really powerful, but since you are a vegan, you cannot kill animals, which um, can end up rather severely limiting your XP gain, and if you enter into a monster zoo, well, that's gonna suck a little bit. If you want any kind of realistic hope of actually conquering the Dungeon of Dreadmoor, you need a fair bit of knowledge and understanding as to how all of this nonsense works, and then figure out a build with a great deal of synergy, allowing you to get to the last boss and actually killing him. We're not going to do anything like that, however, so we're simply just going to hit the random button. Uh, which means that we are a flesh-smithing Promethean magic user with the Perception ability, with dabbles in alchemy. We are also an Emomancer, a rogue scientist, and a magical lawyer. Right. Sure, that, that makes a lot of sense. Let's delve on into the dungeon then, shall we? It's been a very long time since I've played this game, and I uh, basically don't have... Oh, a lever. We shall pull it, obviously. I have no idea what that does, but I'm sure it'll lead something funny. Right, so what do we have here then? Uh, that's a lot more abilities that I'm used to when I hit the random bottom. Zombification. All right, reduce the reuse recycle while reducing your enemy to bloody corpse and bring them back to life as a formerly dead servant. All right, makes sense. Dragon's Breath. Belt forth a jet of flame. Sounds useful. Love will teleport us away. You can't be together anymore. Alright. Uh, confiscate evidence. Cast on items far away to shove them in your inventory. Nothing exceeds the reach of the law. Aha. Okie dokie then. I, uh, I think I understand. <laughs> Maybe. Not entirely sure, but okay. Uh, do I have a weapon? I do not have a weapon. Right, well, let's uh, equip ourselves with this gnarled club that the game very kindly handed me, and we shall pick up a side quest from Inconsequentia here. Da, da, ooh, our first enemy, a blob. That is first, uh, pirate training breaches. Well, I don't have any pants on, so that's fantastic. Let's vomit for some flames, flames, flames here. Yeah, that's actually really effective. Another rarity for hitting the random button. It does eat the shit out of my magic bar, though, which is not entirely ideal. Got great AoE and a bit of an on-the-ground dot, though, so... I oh, Jesus. I really can't... Uh oh, man, I'm also out of magic. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have held that lever down so down quickly. Hmm. Right, that cost seven. Right, let me see if I can't... Right, I can regenerate a little bit of magic by drinking sewer brew here, which is great. It's not going to regenerate it immediately, but it'll start to tick- Ow! Jesus Christ, Mr. Enrage Diggle! Mother of- I am boned. That was swift. That was very swift. Alright, if I can gain a little bit of distance, maybe I have some kind of hope that I can kill these things. 
before they murder me. I should keep distance. Please don't come after me. Don't. Oh, Christ. Right. Some very desperate maneuvering is called for you. Ah, of course. Well, bone me most so gently. Right, let's, let's drink that. Which is going to give me some mana back. The problem is I'm quickly running out of dungeon. And I'm about to be attacked from multiple directions. This is going to be an awfully short adventure. <laughs> and there you go. Dungeons of Dreadmoor. Right. <laughs> uh, yes, and unlike modern day roguelites, no, you don't get anything from dying. You're just simply dead. So pick a new build and try again, hoping for the best. I figured, like, oh, I, I've got magic. I can do stuff. And then I get into a room with a bunch of enraged diggles, which violate me in two seconds without having any healing potions. All right. This time, I am a dual-wielding shield bearer. <laughs> Fantastic. Who has a habit of burglary and fungal arts. I also do a little bit of smithing and battle geology. And we are once again doing uh, magical law, are we? Very well. Unfortunately, the hero is you. Yes, it's rather tragic. Uh, did you give me a weapon this time? Um, no, but you did give me a shield. Right, well, that is certainly something. Uh, I do have some bowlers. That's nice. And I have a robe. Am I naked? Um, actually, I'm wearing a leather cuirass, so that's going to be a lot better than the robes, presumably. Uh, plutonic fist. Okay. And confiscate evidence. Right, we remember what that one did. Plutonic fists. I guess that's going to be my primary means of uh, defending myself then. Punching things. Very well. Da, da, da. Very chilled, laid-back music. Especially considering everything going on here. Oh, enraged diggles. Right, I remember what you did to me last time, so let's just avoid you for the time being. Inbill some uh, fire arts. Right. I'll take that. I have no idea what these things do. We're going to ignore them for now, since they're probably a trap of some sort. A grilled steak, definitely. More sewer bro. We don't have any money for a food vendor. Uh-oh. All right, a Amazonian bumblebee person. We're going to cast the buff on ourselves, and then we are going to try to kick some ass. This is a lot more enemies than I really wanted to fight at this point. On the other hand, the Plutonic Fists are turning out to be really goddamn good. Ah, that went surprisingly well. You can also probably tell that the game is actually turn-based rather than uh, real-time. Every time you take an action, you move on the map. This also includes picking up items or eating or putting anything up or down. Ow. God damn it. My trap sense is apparently really shit. Sonic Wand. Well, I'm basically unarmed at the moment, so I'll take that. This is a teleportation pad. We're not going to touch that right now because I have no idea where the hell I'm going to end up. And I'm not nearly as confident in my combat statistics this time around. Not that that really helped me the first time, mind you. And luckily for me, this is a permanent thing. I would have loved to have unarmed. That would be fantastic. Right, what do we got here then? So we've got a level up. Um, honorary Armourer, Ingatier, Methodologist. This will increase my stats, that's pretty good. A Fungal Arts is pretty powerful. I had a good run with that a while ago. A Burglary, Vending Machine Looter. Get one free item from every vending machine. If no one was watching, it wasn't a crime. Uh, you know, that's not a bad idea. Hmm. Lock up, examine to their composition. Ninja Vanish. Five finger discount. Alright, this sounds like something I'll pick up a little bit later. Hum. What about uh, Battle Geology? Stone Secret. Okay, okay. Boost to stats. Seismic Uppercut. Powerful. Legalese. Obtain an injunction against the monster for transformation plus damages. Whatever the hell that means. Right, I, I think um, I think combat geology is going to be my best bet for the immediate time being. Black powder. 
There are a lot of items scattered through the uh, the dungeon. Many of them are completely useless to me at the moment. The fungal nonsense, however, is very good because. Since I can actually grow fungus on uh, deceased enemies, and I am a fungomancer, I can actually gain a great deal of benefits from using funguses. Like, you know, making them my servants and bringing them back to life and making them fight the enemy. You might not think that an army of fungi would be all that powerful, but, well, I'd point you towards the orcs and say that, no, no, you're actually wrong. They can be incredibly powerful as allies. Oh, another bumblebee person, and uh, a bit of a loot room, I'll take it. A simple hatchet. You know what? I'm actually kind of liking my plutonic fists right now. They, uh... They hit pretty hard. Melee prowess is improved, so... I'm thinking... It's actually going to boost everything. So let's put the wooden shield over there. Yes, yes, yes. I think we shall use this to our advantage. 21 damage on a crit and level 1. Not bad. Mossy shield. That sounds appealing. Uh, yep, that is certainly better. This shield is soft, fuzzy and pleasant, though a bit moist. Could. I think. A little black book. I have no particular use for you. That's a magic item. We shall drink from the fountain. You find a shiny penny in the fountain. Touch a Midas. Or you touch turns to gold. Or bits of your enemies, at least. Okay. Can I touch you? I can't touch you. Wand of Tesla. Hmm. Oh, money. Aha. Uh -huh. You know, that really would be the worst possible thing to do someone when- Ah, Loot Fisk, yes. There is a Loot Fisk god in this video game, which already makes it better than most video games. Um... I mean, sure. The whole stealing thing seems quite appealing, honestly. We shall pick up another side quest. I don't even bother reading them. They'll- They'll let me know when I've completed them. Don't worry about it. Kill the bee person. I am doing pretty decent damage early on. Now, unfortunately, melee combat is uh, going to be a hell of a lot less um, valid later on, tragically. It's this. I can't even tell the stats half of the time. The icons are painfully small. <laughs> this game was not really intended to be played on this kind of monitor or this resolution, really, so we're going to have to just bump on by as best we can. You can already see the general gist of the game, though. I'm wandering around on the first out of a total of 15 levels right now. Just uh, killing whatever I come across and gathering resources for my future journey. Eventually, I'll come across a stair down when I can advance to the next level of the dungeons. Though you usually don't want to do this until you've explored most, if not pretty much indeed all, of the level that you are on. And this is because, of course, every level you get makes you more powerful and, even more importantly, unlocks new abilities which are vital for your uh, hope of staying alive. There are also a fair bit of traps beyond the more mundane ones, which you've probably already seen and strewn about on the ground. There are also special rooms, like monster zoos, for example. Monster zoos are exactly what they sound like. They are an entire room stuffed to the absolute brim with hostile monsters. Which can be an amazing way to level up, or a great way to get yourself killed really, really quickly. We shall, uh, we shall get Seismic Uppercut here, and we shall bind that as our casting thing. And we'll figure out what that do once we run into some enemies again. Ooh, lockpicks. Very useful. We shall pull the lever. Pulling the levers is always beneficial. Ah, there's an obelisk. I need an item to use on that obelisk. I do not have the item. Troll Scroll. It reads, what does being fair have to do with anything? It's actually a good question. Can I, uh... Can I confiscate evidence? Yes, I can. Lovely. Okay, that's a useful ability. Allows me to snatch things from a distance. Dun, dun. We're not really sure if this Dreadmore person is actually evil. He seems to have created an army of 
little fluffy drill-nosed creatures and the occasional undead spirit, but he doesn't really seem to be bothering the overworld or anything. Uh, then again, he is undead, and, well, it is fine to be racist towards the undead. Or species, I don't really know. Ooh. Now that's a nice one. I'm presuming that's got some sort of, uh... Ow, I've teleported inside Blobby. Most unfortunate. I'm presuming that is some kind of an area of effect ability. Black powder, sure, don't mind if I do. Copper wire. Bookshelf. You can see I'm picking up these various recipes too. There is a crafting system, which is rather specific, really. As you can see, we got it down here. Crafting. Right, so I've got a little alchemy, little alchemist, little blacksmith thing. I do have two copper ingots, which means I can make copper-plated boosts. And I will indeed make myself a pair of clopper, a clopper, a copper-plated boosts. Mewclid, the dance of constitutions. That's, that's awful. Did I have a, oh, I thought I had two copper ingots. Darnation, the game tells me I have two copper ingots. Ah. Uh, curse you, ancient ass games user interface. Spring loaded power core. Ow. I would love a little bit more trap sense, but uh, we shall simply deal with that. Oh, right. I keep forgetting that I can steal items now. Drink. Thank you. I'm not using the thieving ability to its full potential. Ah. Well, that didn't help me out much, honestly. Let's try this one, then. Much more interesting. Mystical graffiti. Study is to learn the secret dimensions. Ah, yes. There are passwords that you are supposed to write down. I cannot condemn that enough. Ooh, copper ingot. Fantastic. That actually will allow me to craft those fancy-ass boots, then. And put them on my now-naked feetsies. Lovely. I have boots. Uh, tragically, they don't actually change my character. Oh. That just seemed to have spawned another trap, actually, which I'm not entirely happy with. Crude stone axe. That's not going to be better than the axe I already have. Do I have a helmet? I do not have a helmet, so we shall put this saucepan on our heads, because why wouldn't you? Helmet of Threepwood. Ah, Guybrush Threepwood. I played those games when I had no idea pretty much what a video game was, straight up. And by God... Old school adventure games and their ugh, the, the, their puzzle solving system. Mm. Awful. Actually, genuinely awful. How do you get the scissors from the roof? Well, you need to you know hit the head, hit the barber over the head with with, with gum or something. You see, because otherwise that isn't going to happen. How do you win the log tossing competition? Well, um, you need a, a drill and a bucket of like plastic or something. Aha! Uh -huh. I see. No, I didn't see. Nobody saw. I'm pretty sure nobody figured out half of those things beyond the age old tradition of picking up every item in the video game and then rubbing that item on every other item in the video game, no matter how ridiculous sounding it might be, and praying and hoping. Hey, it worked out eventually, supposedly. And, to be fair, there was a lot of fun little things with those old games. Oh, my inventory is full. You can increase the size of some of the UI things, which is very, very useful. Which will put down the wooden shield. I don't really know if I have any use for salt immediately, but... We'll carry it with us. Diggle! You reek of fear and loot fisk. Well. Is this... Oh, 10 turn cooldown. Right, I was wondering, like, wait, hold on, can I do like, not do this? 10 turn cooldowns with this spell. That seems a little bit harsh, in my opinion. Another diggle. Then again, I am murdering these diggles far more effectively than I did with my first, honestly, also kind of better combat -y build. The problem probably was that, that build was all combat and nothing else, whereas now I have a little bit of utility, which is which allowed me to survive a bit. If I was to actually use my ability to steal things, I feel like I would probably do a lot better, but... My inventory is indeed full. Got it! No! No! Put, put, put it down. There you go. Good God. 
Right. Death. Don't worry, death is not as dangerous as he sounds. In fact, he's a bit of a weakling. Whew, okay, that was a bit hairier than I would have entirely liked. Um, we shall eat the brie cheese to restore our health whilst I fruitlessly try to kill this thing. I don't even know what I just picked up. A tentacle of some sort. It's fine. Uh-oh. Right, this is a problem. Right, that knocked him back a little bit. The unfriendly AIs are very, very dangerous. I have died to those a frightening number of times early on because they hit very, very, very hard. Was that the thing? Monster computer. Engraved with some kind of fruit. Ha. Huh. All right, well, if you say so. And the shop. Do I have any money? I've got 260 cash, so I could buy some adventuring gloves. I don't have any gloves, but I'm likely to find something better than something I can pick up at the shop for 260 buckaroos, so never mind. Hello, Diggle. Goodbye, Diggle. The monsters will also, to some extent, respawn behind you, though I don't think they'll respawn infinitely. If they did, you could... Uh, oh, then we've got a bit of a special mob down there. If they did, I imagine you could grind them quite effectively. You go away. The Baron is an annoying little bastard because he teleports every time he hits you. Come on. There you go. He does give a buttload of XP, though. Basalt skin? I think I'll take Slime Herd now. That'll give me a possibility of not dying instantly if I run into a monster zoo. I also grew a mushroom on his carcass, as you can see there. The Fungal Mancer is, is actually really, really good. What worries me the most is that the achievement you get when you get Fungal Mancer is Love Slave of Yogoth, which worries me, frankly, quite a lot. It suggests to me that I am being used as some kind of ancient fungal god sex toy, which I don't, I'm not thrilled at the idea, if I have to be entirely honest. Not to be overly judgmental of angel, ancient fungal deities, but it just doesn't really sound like something that would be for me. Mummies. Feminine mummies. The best kind of mummies. This is the second floor, and shit gets a lot more real down here. We've got ourselves a trap. Let's try and disarm that for XP. We've got more levers to pull. A root of char. I'll just eat it. I don't even know what it is. I'll just eat it. I'll presume that it's good. Well, this is unfortunate. I don't know what's currently going on, but it looks negative. In fact, judging by the fact that my health bar just disappeared, I'm pretty sure it's negative. I have a sneaking supposition this might have had something to do with the root of char. Yep, yep, pretty sure this had something to do with the root of char. <laughs> um, well, I shall simply just keep going until I die. Oh, God. Did my head just explode and then come back on again? Right, so let's keep uh, shoving cheese down our, down our gullet hole, hoping that it will save us from whatever is currently happening to me. Extra blobby. We shall kill you. Hmm. I haven't exploded for several seconds. This is way better than what's been happening so far. 1,300. Yeah, I don't have any that kind of money. You can steal things, but the shopkeeper does not take kindly to stealing. And uh, if I remember correctly, the shopkeeper is a little bit on the powerful side. So we shan't do that. Rusty Metal Buckler. Well, this is certainly something, but... Oh, Jesus. Okay. All right. Um, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Lots of stuff. Oh, my Jesus. Um... All right, let's uh, summon a pet. That's going to 
take some of the damage away from us. Use the seismic uproar. And then we shall hope and we shall pray that we can survive this rather sudden and violent ambush. They're confused. This is good. Lay into them with the battle axe, sir. If you hit them often enough, they will die. Ooh. And that is one of the reasons why Fungomancer is so goddamn good, because having a pet is really, really, really bloody useful. Could you just die? I would like to point out as well that the bats have little buttholes on them, which you can see if uh, they're facing away from the camera. Leather belt. I do not possess a belt. Nor do I possess pants, so... I require resistance. Oh. oh. Hey, lots of jack legs. Well, I might get hungry in the near future, so why not take the children of my enemies? They will nourish me well. They literally will, they're ten health apiece. Nogsek, the cycle of engines. Very well, we shall use confiscate evidence on that. Except my inventory is full, and my screen is freaking out. Lovely. Hmm. Staff class weapon. And as they not something I'll, I don't want to use all that much. Uh oh, loading time. Poorly clone heroin. Oh shite. Okay, so poorly cloned. Those are unfortunate uh, because they can be really, really, really gosh darn good. We shall summon our little boy here to try and uh, fight them. Toady too is not entirely in and dangerous. Right, he's doing a good job tanking, so we're going to move in and do whatever damage we can. We shall kill the murderer's root vegetable. Because it is a root vegetable and nobody likes root vegetables. My summon's health is drafting drastically and scarily. Swiftly. Use that on her. That'll confuse her a little bit. It'll buy me some time. Hopefully enough to fire up another one of those. Aha! Eat a dick and die! Alright, well that was dangerous, but we survived. I'm sure there's a wealth of things there, but... I can't see them between underneath the pile of fungus. This is going halfway well, actually. I've got a little bit of a summon pet. I've got a, a ranged attack, a halfway decent melee attack. Even got a little bit of decent loot, a halfway okay shield. Wouldn't mind a better melee weapon, but... I've seen a hell of a lot worse than this. I have reached the second floor without getting a single weapon sometimes. Hmm. Slime friend, come, kill your compatriots with me. This gets a lot more uh, volatile, though, as you get to the lower levels. Uh, by the time you reach about the halfway point or so, you really don't want to be doing melee damage at all, because the AI has the ability to dodge your attack so well that it counterattacks. And at that point, because it hits so hard, you'll lose damn near half of your health in one go. And if you get particularly unlucky, and this happens with frightening frequency, the enemy will then immediately go on to take their turn, of course, and hit you again. Which can splat your health bar awfully quickly, if not even just outright one-shot you, so... You really want a hell of a lot more of a focus on ranged combat at that point. But hey, not one like we're playing this particularly seriously at the moment. The game is available on Steam right now for very little, I would imagine. Let me actually look that up. The screen is going to turn completely black now because the game is, well, impossible to record via the usual means. So I just have to record the entire screen. Yes, there we go. It's four bucks or so, so yes. If you want to kill a few hours with a roguelite with a bunch of really ridiculous abilities, like, 
weaponized veganism, battle geology, or legal magical law, then this game will do very well. And uh, I think I'll wrap it up there before I manage to kill myself again. Frankly, it was humiliating enough to die within five seconds of starting my first run. So, until next time, I have been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.